All right. Welcome to the Tempe City Council regular council meeting uh, for Thursday, October 29th. The time is now 6.02 p.m. Due to concer concerns about COVID-19 exposure, the city has implemented measures to protect our community, including the closing of council chambers and limiting public attendance to electronic means only. Members of the public may view the live meeting proceedings on Tempe Channel 11 or attend the meeting virtually through Cisco WebEx events by visiting www.tempe.gov slash clerk for more information. Item number one on the agenda is moment of silence. We're gonna take a, just a quick moment and have a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Next up, item number two, Pledge of Allegiance. I'm gonna go ahead and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of, America, of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next up we have item number three, meeting minutes. I'm gonna be assisted tonight by Councilmember Garland. Uh, first of all, item number 3A, meeting minutes, approval of city council meeting minutes. We don't have any, uh, which next up leads us to item 3B, Councilmember Garland. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from our boards and commissions and committees. Items Sorry. 3B, 1 through 9. Ah, Randy, we're too fast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's, it's been moved for the acceptance of board, commission, and committee meeting minutes. Items 3B, 1 through 9, moved by Council Member Garland and seconded by Vice Mayor Keating. Uh, any comments or questions? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Actually, I'll, actually, I'll go roll call. This is for virtual. Uh, Council Member Navarro? Aye. Council Member Cuby? Aye. Council Member Garland? Aye. Vice Mayor Keating? Yes. Councilmember Arredondo Savage? Aye. Councilmember Adams? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Thank you very much. Item 3B passes unanimously. Next up, we've got item four, reports and announcements. Mayor's reports and announcements. I do not have any. Uh, Mr. City Manager, do you have any announcements? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council. Uh, just very briefly, I wanted to congratulate Frank Fuerte from our Municipal Utilities Department for his almost 31 year career with the City of Tempe. Frank retired today, had the pleasure of attending his retirement ceremony. He has worked uh, successfully and has the respect of his, of his coworkers uh, throughout the city and all who have known him. And we are gonna miss him, but we wish him all the best in retirement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. All right, next up, item five is the consent agenda. Uh, all items listed on the consent agenda will be considered as a group and will be enacted with one motion by the City Council unless an item is removed for separate consideration. Members of the public may remove public hearing items for separate consideration. Public hearing items are designated by an asterisk. Council members may remove any item for separate consideration or to declare a conflict of interest. If a council member would like to declare a conflict at this time, the city clerk will provide the council member with a disclosure form. The consent agenda as written here is miscellaneous items, 5A1 through 5A7, awards of bids and contracts, items 5B1 through 5B7, and resolutions item 5C1 through 5C8. Any agenda item that's marked with an asterisk is a public hearing item and can be removed by a member of the public for separate consideration. Council, also, if you've got any items, uh, please let me know and I can remove those right now. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to remove 5B2. Is that one of the ones? Yes, uh, Councilor McCubey, 5B2. Thank yes. you. Uh, any other member of council, any other items they'd like to remove for separate consideration? Okay, hearing none. I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item 5B2, which has been pulled for separate consideration. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion. Second. Who's, uh, who's the first? Vice Mayor Keating and oh, uh, okay. Councilman Thank Navarro. You. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Vice Mayor Keating has moved. Uh, Councilman Navarro second. I'm going to go with the roll call vote. Uh, Council Member Navarro? Aye. Council Member Cuby? 
Aye, sorry. No problem. Uh, Councilmember Garland? Aye, Mayor. Vice Mayor Keating? Yes. Councilmember Arredondo Savage? Aye. Councilmember Adams? Aye. And I vote aye as well. So the consent agenda, with the exception of 5B2, passes unanimously. Uh, next up, then, we have item number 5B2. That is to award a one-year con one contract with four one-year renewal options to Vincere Cancer Center for a cancer screening program for the Tempe Fire Medical Rescue Department. Uh, Council Member QB, you have this item pulled. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, I reached through my council aide, Kristen Gwynn, to uh, Chief Reese, and I believe he's ready to, to discuss this issue a little. I am fully supportive of it and really delighted for the um, matching funds and uh, and this is so important, but I thought it was a good opportunity to talk to the council and the public about some of the risks that we face, um, that, our count, that our firefighters face in protecting us, and, um, and also ask you know, about further risks that, that are out there that aren't as known or quantifiable as, as some of the risks that the EPA is bringing our attention to. And so I just thought we, it was an opportunity to hear more from Chief Reese, if he's available, to talk about um, you know, we've suffered losses in our Tempe family um, over chemical exposure and cancer as a result. So I just wanted to hear a little more. That sounds good. Council Member QB, uh, Chief Reese, are you available? I, I am, Mr. Mayor. But thank you, Council Member QB, for that and for pulling this and giving me an opportunity to speak. Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Greg Reese, Fire Medical Rescue Chief. Again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words about this item uh, as Council Member QB. Uh, alluded to, this is extremely near and dear to me. Firefighters are continuously exposed to various toxins and carcinogens. As a result of this exposure, firefighters have significantly increased cancer incidence and mortality rates, including cancers of the lung, colon, prostate, breast, and skin. Although personal protective equipment and decontamination protocols are in place to minimize exposure to the contaminants and toxins, firefighters are still exposed to many compounds designated as carcinogens by the International Agency of Research on Cancer. Just a few of those examples are benzene, diesel engine exhaust, asbestos, chloroform, soot, styrene, and formaldehyde. These substances can be inhaled and absorbed through the skin and it can occur both at a fire scene and in the firehouse where idling fire trucks produce diesel exhaust, which was addressed in previous CIP, in a previous CIP as part of our cancer reduction program. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Hazard and Health reports that firefighters have a 9% increase in cancer diagnosis and 14% increase in cancer-related deaths compared to the general population. Even though most firefighters are concerned about work-related exposures and cancer, only a small percentage received some form of screening over the past year. With the acceptance of this grant, 100% of our Tempe firefighters will be screened by a physician. Our firefighters work in an inherently dangerous occupation daily, daily and protective measures that will ensure they are not at an increased cancer risk are continuously being implemented. These measures could not be implemented without your support. In honor of fallen Tempe Fire Medical Rescue Firefighter, Tommy Ariaga, and on behalf of the Fire Med Medical Rescue family members, I wanna thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council for your continued support of our cancer reduction program. I'd also like to thank City Manager Andrew Chang, Andrew Ching and Deputy City Manager Ken Jones for their support as we wrote this grant. This grant was authored by Deputy Chief Kyle Carmen, who was Tommy Ariga August captain. And tonight is an honor for me to speak on behalf of both Kyle and the Ariaga family. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Chief. Really appreciate it. Uh, Councilmember Cuby. Thank you, Chief Reese. I really appreciate hearing from you on this really important issue, and I would move to approve. Great. It's been item 5B2 has been moved uh, by Councilmember Cuby. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Adams. Uh, I'll go ahead then and take a roll call vote. Uh, Councilmember Navarro? I think I heard an aye there. Um, <laughs> uh, Councilmember Adams? Councilmember Arredondo Savage? Aye, Mayor. Councilmember Garland? Aye, Mayor, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Keaton? Yes. 
And I vote I, I vote I as well. I think I didn't believe it went out there. Count, I think count number two. Yes, I. All right, perfect. Uh, that motion to 5B2 passes 7 to 0. All right. Next up here is item number six, which is the non consent agenda. All items listed on the non consent agenda will be considered separately. Agenda items scheduled for introduction and first hearing will, not, will be heard, but will not be voted upon at this meeting. Agenda items scheduled for second public hearing and final adoption will be voted upon tonight. Council members who may have a conflict of interest may abstain from voting on a matter, and the city clerk will provide the council members with a disclosure form at this time. First up, items 566A, six, six miscellaneous items, bids, contracts, and resolutions. First item under the section is 6A1, which is to adopt a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute the subgrant award agreement between the Arizona Department of Public Safety Victims of Crime Act, Victim Assistance Grant Program, and the City of Tempe to accept and disperse a federal grant for the provision of CARE 7 victim services. Council, is, are there any comments or discussions? All right. Hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and ask for a motion. Oh, Mayor. Moved by Councilmember Arredondo Savage. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Vice Mayor Keating. I'll take a roll call vote. Councilmember Navarro? Aye. Councilmember Cuby? Aye. Councilmember Garland? Aye. Vice Mayor Keating? Yes. Councilmember Arredondo Savage? Councilmember Adams? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Item 6A1 passes 7 to 0. Next item under the section is 6A2, which is to approve the utilization of a seven year source well cooperative contract with Axon Enterprise Incorporated for the purchase of a body worn camera and digital evidence storage solution for the police department. Council, any comments or discussion? All right, hearing none, uh, do I have a motion for item 6A2? Moved. Second, Mayor. Moved by Councilmember Adams and seconded by Councilmember Arredondo Savage. All right, I'm gonna go for a roll call vote. Councilmember Navarro? Aye. Councilmember Cuban? Aye. Councilmember Garland? Aye. Count Vice Mayor Keating? Yes. Councilmember Arredondo Savage. Sorry. Councilmember Adams. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Item 6A2 passes 7 to 0. Next item under the section is 6A3, which is to approve the utilization of a one year renewal to utilize the state of Arizona cooperative contract with Motorola Solutions Incorporated for two way radios, parts, and related repair and maintenance services for the city's public safety radio systems. Council, any comments or discussion? Move to approve. Moved by Vice Mayor Keating. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Councilmember Adams. I'm going to go for a roll call vote. Councilmember Navarro? Aye. Councilmember Cuban? Aye. Councilmember Garland? Aye. Vice Mayor Keating? Yes. Councilmember Arredondo Savage? Aye. Councilmember Adams? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Item 6A3 passes 7 to 0. The last item under the section is 6A4, which is to award a two year contract with two two year renewal options to Western Environmental Equipment Company to provide wastewater sampling services and flow monitoring equipment for the Municipal Utilities Department. Council, any comments or discussion? Move to approve. Okay, none. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look for a motion on 6A4. Move to approve, Mayor. Okay, moved second. by Councilmember Navarro. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Vice Mayor Keating. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Councilmember Navarro? Aye. Councilmember Cuby? Aye. Councilmember Garland? Aye. Vice Mayor Keating? Yes. Councilmember Arredondo Savage? Aye. Councilmember Adams? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Item 6A4 passes 7 to 0. Next up, item 6B, ordinances and items for introduction and first hearing. There are none. So next up, we've got uh, items number 6C, uh, 
The following agenda items are scheduled for second public hearing and final adoption were read and introduced on October 15, 2020, with the exception of item 64, and votes will be taken tonight. So here we go. The first item under section 61 is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance authorizing the abandonment of a waterline easement located at 1935 East Apache Boulevard, west of Martin Lane and south of Apache Boulevard. The first public hearing was held on October 15, 2020. Council, uh, actually, first I'm going to ask, uh, Madam Clerk, any comments received from the public on this item? None for this item, Mayor. All right, and I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Council, any comments or discussion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a All motion right. to approve. Moved by Councilmember Adams. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Vice Mayor Keating. I'm going to go with the roll call vote here. Councilmember Navarro? Aye. Councilmember Cuby? Aye. Councilmember Garland? Aye. Vice Mayor Keating? Yes. Councilmember Arredondo Savage? Aye, Mayor. Councilmember Adams? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Item 61 passes 7 to 0. Next item under the section is 62, which is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance for a zoning map amendment from PCC2 to MU4 and an amended planned area development overlay and approve a development plan review for a five-story 310 unit multifamily development for Tempe Market Station located at 1953 East Rio Salado Parkway. The applicant is Barry Riddell, LLC. The first public hearing was held on October 15, 2020. I'm going to ask, uh, is the applicant, Wendy Riddell, available to make a statement? Yes, Mayor, I am. All right, great. Um, Ms. Riddell, I just wanted to ask you, too, I know we've talked during the course of this week, whatever, about, uh, you know, trying to find some, you know, additional voluntary contributions to support affordable housing, uh, you know, for the city. But I wanted to uh, turn it over to you to make a full presentation. I know the council already heard a full presentation back on October 15th. Uh, but just for the benefit of the public, I'd like to have another one this evening. Uh, but then if we can actually discuss uh, some of the additional stipulations that we discussed and we can kind of get those read into the record uh, and have some council comment. But with that said, I'll go ahead and turn this over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and thank you, staff, for pulling up our presentation. Uh, this is Wendy Riddell with the law firm Barry Riddell, 6750 East Camelback. Uh, my pleasure to be here this evening, I guess here being my conference room, to appear virtually on behalf of Trammell Crow and their site at Smith and Rio. Uh, next slide, please, if you would. So I'm very excited. I know there's a lot of excitement too to have High Street Residential, which is a subsidiary of Trammell Crow here in Tempe. This will be their first um, project in Tempe. Uh, Trammell Crow being part of CBRE, the world's largest real estate service firm. It is number 32 on Forbes 2020 Just 100 list and named one of Fortune's most admired companies eight years in a row. This gives you just kind of an understanding of the type of awards, jump back one, that uh, Trammell Crow has uh, been awarded over time for some of their developments. Next slide, if you would. Thank you. So the site that we're talking about here is located at Smith and Rio Salado, Tempe Market Station. It's part of a larger overall um, commercial project, uh, three point, nearly 3.91, nearly four acres of commercial currently planned for hotel, retail, restaurant. And then, of course, what you see in blue is what we're here uh, this evening to discuss. Next slide, please. So we are here requesting, we initially were requesting a general plan amendment, but that was actually approved as part of the Smith Industrial Innovation Hub uh, at the hearing two weeks ago. So we are now moving forward with the rezoning that's in conformance with that general plan amendment that the um, city council recently approved, a PAD amendment, and then a major development plan review approving uh, the plan, the development plan for the site. Next slide. So as I referenced, I think the council is already very well aware that two weeks ago, uh, you guys actually adopted already this general plan amendment, showing our site specifically as appropriate for high density residential and allowing up to 90 feet in height, the star representing uh, our location here on the plan. Next. Uh, and that, of course, is very consistent with your general plan. So when you look at the general plan here, you, this area is called out as a 101-202 interchange hub. 
and that there is a need to support new residential and commercial development within hubs at sufficient densities to support the desired new neighborhood oriented goods and services and to make these a magnet for neighborhoods. Next. And of course, again, from the general plan, you'll see now part of the Smith Hub Gateway, uh, high density residential designation, proximity to employment, entertainment, and pedestrian activity, encourage inter interaction and creates an urban environment that contributes to the hub. The site really is ideally situated for increased density to connect in all these various ways and to service the existing very successful employment that you guys have brought to Tempe. And of course, there's, this is also part of the Apache character area plan where Tempe's vision is as a 20 minute city with a complete streets that are safe, accessible, convenient, comfortable, and are able to very easily access transportation and support the kind of investment that has been made and will be made in the future into streetcar and into the transportation here in Tempe. Next. And of course, all of this is part of the Smith Hub. Again, the, the policy document that was adopted by council two weeks ago that high density residential should locate where pedestrian improvements are planned to maximize the investment and promote the 20 minute city concept. Of course, here immediately on the streetcar line with pedestrian connectivity going north and south and east and west as well. Next. And this just gives you an idea. So not only do we have that pedestrian connectivity, not only do we have the future streetcar, you have the bus route, and you have orbit as well. So a very well connected site, we think ideally situated as your planning documents suggest for high density residential to benefit the surrounding businesses and commercial and utilize these transportation methods. Next slide. So again, part of the Smith's industrial innovation, this is a document that was adopted two weeks ago that calls for increased building height and new residential density along Rio Salado Parkway extending south to 5th Street will help the area meet evolving needs while taking advantage of the hub's well-connected location. And so from there, we move on to the zoning request. Our request here is to uh, modify the site from commercial zoning to mixed use to create a horizontally integrated mixed use. Um, again, to promote the long range plans for increased height and density within the Smith Industrial Innovation Hub. You see the site there in white. Next slide. So if you look, and I know it's a little bit difficult to read, but if you see the underlying site plan, you'll see that it was residential initially, and it is now being replaced, I'm sorry, that it was commercial initially with um, retail and restaurant, and that is now being replaced with multifamily, proposing 310 units. Next. So you'll see these are the renderings to give you an idea of the 310 units, five story apartments. Uh, you see Rio Salado will it be the future streetcar. You see the, the separated sidewalk. You see the entrance, the primary entrance to the facility in the drive. You will see the number of shade trees and shaded um, sidewalk for those pedestrians. Just to give you a couple additional views here from Smith and Rio Salado. Again, seeing how the building is set back, which actually the setbacks are a little bit further off Rio Salado than the previous entitlements, uh, and creating that nice pedestrian experience and ultimate uh, utilization of streetcar. This is the view from the north, looking into the main entry, see the different building material types, uh, you see the driveway, and again, ultimately there will be streetcar here. This is also, this really is a very typical um, luxury community for Trammell Crow. It's got a dog park, it's got a pool, a spa, a fitness center, clubhouse game room, two different interior courtyards. Um, there's ample bike storage room, outdoor barbecues, and then balconies and patios. Uh, the ground units have the ability to walk right out onto the patio uh, and be kind of a part of that street. Next. So now getting to um, what we discussed a little bit last time and has been the subject of much discussion over the last two weeks, 
So this really is market rate housing. It is intended to support the jobs that are existing in the area that you guys have very successfully brought to the area. You've got 4,000 um, employee in employee business park and a master plan, 330 acre redevelopment project when you look at ASU's Novus Innovation Corridor. And there is, we believe, a very immediate need to provide housing for the people that are working within this vicinity and to give them the ability to both work and live within Tempe. Uh, I will point out we are not seeking incentives, any incentives at all as part of this proposal. Next. We are, however, as the mayor alluded to, um, we are agreeing to voluntarily contribute 125,000 to Tempe's Coalition for Affordable Housing uh, and or the city's art program for use in the Smith Industrial Innovation Hub. Uh, when I was in front of you last time, I think one of the questions by uh, Councilwoman Kuby that I was asked specifically to follow up on was the art. Uh, we have been talking with Rebecca Rothman and they have a need for $25,000 to allow them to do an art asset map of this area specifically for the Smith Innovation Hub to be able to determine how best to you know, place art, what type of art, how best to kind of brand the Smith Innovation Hub. So 25,000 of that, um, it's certainly up, ultimately up to the council how to distribute it, but the intent was that 25 would be able to be utilized for art and the re remaining amount would be available to go to the affordable housing fund. Uh, we have also, oh, if you go back one minute, there you go. Uh, I wanted to point out, we also um, then suggested what we have done with a different project is the ability to take matching funds. So as a result of this development, there's pretty significant fees that get paid to the city. Uh, we estimate somewhere around $500,000 in fees in talking with staff that a portion of those funds could be reallocated specifically by the council to the affordable housing um, coalition fund. So immediately there would be $325,000, a contribution made uh, to the coalition for affordable housing and of course a portion to the Smith Hub Art Fund. Next slide. So to memorialize this, uh, we are specifically asking, there is a, a stipulation that was part of the DPR that required us or asked us to do additional design work with staff. We ask that that stipulation respectfully be removed and that in lieu of additional design efforts, that this um, contribution would be accepted, that this stipulation here would be um, added to our PAD, uh, specifically requiring us to execute voluntarily, we are executing, uh, an agreement with the city manager to make this $125,000 available to the Tempe Coalition for Affordable Housing and for the city's art program. And with that, Mayor, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Wendy, really appreciate it. Um, I've got one quick question for uh, Donna Kennedy, our Economic Development Director. Good evening, Mayor. It's Wait, Donna Kennedy. You, Donna, can you once again, just for the record, talk about the, the money, whatever, the 125000 of the $200,000, just to make sure that it's completely clear to the public about how that's coming about? Sure thing. So, Mayor and Council Members, what we have allocated and would like to have allocated the re request, as Wendy Wells stated, as the developer goes through our process, there's certain fees with our community development that are going to be paid for upon completion of different milestones. We collect the fees and then instead of allocating them in a general fund where anything could be um, justified for those fees, we're gonna put a specific use for them to be allocated for the housing affiliate. And once that affiliate you know, starts to have more of a contribution measures to it. It allows the city to go ahead and start projects and to go ahead, put it towards housing, um, working with our department, Naomi Farrell and her housing team to help the city gain more units and to put it out into use into the community um, and specifically perhaps on city property. Right now, our, our fund 
um, is very limited. It's, um, it's a low fund, but having this sort of um, model to go by not only now, but in the future helps us and helps the city, especially council's goals to get affordable housing within our boundaries. So this is a, a unique way. It's 200,000, up to 200,000, I may say. And as Wendy stated, um, we do like to offer the 25,000 of that be put towards the, the arts program and that asset map. We feel that is a very important um, need and we need to get the Smith Hub out and get some marketing and um, almost a sense of place, if you will, so that future developers that come in will know and have some guidance and see what we're doing for it because we have a map in place with some type of identi identity for the area. But the housing, yes, um, the 125 from the client, and then we go ahead and get the fees from the city's portion to allocate for this area and the project. Great, thank you, Donna, really appreciate for it. Housing. Oh, yeah, great. Okay, thank you so much, really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to turn to our city clerk right now to ask if there were any comments received from the public regarding this item or if any requests from the public to speak on this item. Yes, sir. We do have four requests to speak and three items to be read into the record. And our first speaker would be Deborah Zajac. Okay. Great. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hi, Ms. Zajac. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Name's Deborah Zajac. I'm a 26 year Tempe resident at 1711 North McAllister. And, um, you know, we have a general plan that we have to do every 10 years. And then we started doing character areas where we had a lot of engagement and um, input from the residents. And then also this now the strategic plan where we created these innovation hubs that are, you know, encompassed within various character areas. And when the Smith Innovation Hub was first presented um, just about a year ago, I was really excited about it. And then um, just this last month, Mayor Woods, we got an email talking about the Smith Innovation Hub and about the community support. And then I looked and saw what this Tempe Market Station project was, and I was just really surprised and that it didn't fit anything that the gentleman from uh, Cushman Wakefield and um, ISL or something, you know, they talked about grit. Grit is what's going to make things cool. They talked about pocket parks. They talked about using industrial materials and having artwork. And this project, not saying it's a bad project, it's not ugly or anything, but it's just like every other stucco development you seeing built everywhere around around the valley and we could make all these plans and have these designated areas but where the rubber really meets the road is when it comes to meetings like this in front of our leaders who were elected to represent us and i have just seen it over and over again where we get excited about something but then when the projects actually come in front of you all that is just not honored. And I talked to Randy earlier today, because I, I wrote all you guys letters. And um, he also mentioned about this $300,000 that and I said, well, that's better than the 30,000 from Camden too. But now as I'm listening to the actual presentation, that 200,000 is coming out of our general fund we would have received that in fees anyway. So we're taking that from other projects we could be doing and it's going into this housing thing. I mean, we could designate any time $200,000 to go into that. So I don't think that's really um, a giveaway. But also, you know, this is the inaugural project for this innovation industrial hub. And this doesn't reflect that at all. You're asking for a lot. Already, you know, the just by the rezoning, it's increased the property value because at the last meeting, uh, Council Member Navarro talked about, you know, they have to build this because, you know, of what the amount of property costs. Their investment increased just by the rezoning, but they're also asking for greater setbacks or less setbacks, um, greater lot coverage, bye-bye pocket parks. 
um, and then reduced parking. So somebody who wants to live in these buildings is going to have a car. What are they going to have to park in front of the a tool and die shop because they don't have designated parking? And they talked about these enclosed courtyards. The way the Smith Industrial Hub was presented and Council members were excited about it with these pocket parks, gathering places for people. This is going to be gathering places for people just at that specific development. It's not a place that's going to draw people from the whole community. And that's the way it was presented. And this project doesn't reflect that at all to me. So I definitely do not support this project in its current form. It's not that it's ugly. I, do, I wouldn't care if it were taller. And, you know, I wish the rents weren't as high. I think they're outrageous. I mean, for, I don't know, we're next to a shopping center, but it's a shopping center that has Target and Ross and Five Below. It's not a shopping center that reflects high end. So, I don't know. It's not a project I support. I would encourage you to not support this as is, or if you choose to support it and, or consider it, you, I ask that you continue it because these last minute concessions that are made, I think are part of a tactic that's part of a bigger strategy so that people, because what I heard the scuttlebutt was that these developers won't budge. And then at the last minute, they make concessions and we're supposed to fall over. I would ask that it be continued so the concessions could be more thoroughly vetted and evaluated by all the council members because the way it was explained to me by Vice Mayor Keating was not what I heard during this presentation. So I'm asking for a continuance or to not support it at all. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Zajac, appreciate it. Um, the uh, next speaker, Carla. Next speaker will be Brad Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. You're, you're all set to go. Good evening, everyone, um, Mayor and, and everyone else. Um, my name is Brad Chapman, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I've been a resident renter on East Orange Street in the Escalante neighborhood for just over a year. I really like the neighborhood and enjoy walking my dog at the Escalante Park every day. The housing issue immediately caught my attention and struck a nerve that this proposed development offers no affordable workforce housing. You see, last summer I was a week away from living in my car due to the lack of affordable housing in the valley and surrounding areas. After a three month search, I learned that rental prices and moving costs were on a steady incline, pricing me out of the housing market. It was a miracle that someone from my church found out about my situation and offered me respectable housing below market rate, just days away from my lease end and moving out of my apartment, my previous apartment. I really think addressing housing, affordable housing issues need to be addressed at the zoning planning meetings. And I can see here from a neighborhood standpoint, I'm a newbie and I'm standing up for everyone. And also, um, uh, I forgot to preface this. It's, this is uh, included in a letter from Judy and Ron Tapscott, which I don't see anywhere in the attachments or on the agenda. And I see that some concessions were made at the final whim. And well, let me continue. Um, I'm almost done. Um, so addressing this at these meetings for new developments needs emphasis. I'm functionally disabled and on a fixed income, but I'm able to pay around $800 for rent only, and that doesn't exist. I do not qualify for any kind of local state assistance as I'm just over the qualifying threshold. I'm a tenant at will and could easily face homelessness again if my rent increases. So I ask you to consider what would I have to make to afford a studio apartment at Tempe Market Station? Monthly rent averaged $1,500. After tax monthly income using one third for rent, 45,000 a year. That's an annual salary taxable at a 25% rate of $68,000. The hourly rate for that is $35.42. 
how many jobs really are so local to those uh, and your encouragement for walkability and transportation and all that? I don't believe it. The median house, household income in 85281 zip code is $35,682. The average household income in zip code 85281 is 49,843. And that's as of today. Um, I just I want to thank you. And I also um, ask what of the letter that nothing was even mentioned in opposition to this proposal and signed by 249 residents. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, you have two more speakers. Mayor, we have Mark Davis listed next. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Davis, whenever you're ready. Mr. Mayor, I'm attempting to find that individual. There was a Davis in the audience, but that individual is no longer here. Okay, do we want to go to the next speaker and then we'll see if Mr. Davis comes back? Uh, the next speaker listed was Philip Yates, and I also am not seeing him in the queue. Okay. So I do have some cards to read into the record. Let's, let's go ahead and do that then. Okay. First card is from Richard Newhauser. He writes, I urge the Tempe City Council to reject the Tempe Market Station proposal. As a member of the faculty at ASU, I know that almost all my students have to work to pay their bills, excuse me, <clears throat> and most of them work full time. I also know that none of my students could afford to live in what was being planned for the Tempe Market Station. Our city ought to make it possible for my students to not only work and go to school here, but to live in Tempe as well. We have enough high cost and high density apartments in Tempe. We do not need more of them. Instead of the kind of development proposed in the Tempe Market Station, I hope the council will support affordable housing for our city. Next item comes from Ron Tapscott and it's rather long. I'm going to go ahead and read the first five minutes of it and then the rest has already been provided to council ahead of time. Mr. Tapscott writes, Mayor and Council, please find the documentation supported by 249 Tempe residents. He has since amended that to 262 residents who ask for a no vote on the proposed Tempe Market Station, which comes before you for a second reading on Thursday, October 29th. There are two deficiencies in this proposal. It, number one, ignores the longstanding and growing need for affordable and workforce housing in our city. Number two, it is in contradiction to the original vision of the Smith Smith Industrial Innovation Hub. Lost opportunities, affordable workforce housing, developers have been awarded much and have given back little, awards of tax relief, meager contributions to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, and minimal public art amenities have been at the expense of Tempe taxpayers, particularly those struggling with limited finances. The current economy, rising unemployment, and wage suppression have aggravated the problem. Recent projects that have given back little to the community, to mention a few, are Camden 2, the Maker District, and the Banyan Project on the County Island, the latter still in formulation. Camden 2 is a poster child for meager donations to the Housing Trust Fund. Approved by the Council on April 11, 2019, Camden 2 is a luxury high-end development in one of the poorest areas of Tempe. It will produce approximately 400 units. The developer's attorney, Charles Holmantle, offered 30,000 to the Housing Trust Fund rather than allocate 10% City of Phoenix formula for affordable housing when density and high bonuses are given of the projected units toward workforce or affordable housing. The developer Camden USA Incorporated, parent Camden Property Trust, generated $957 million in revenue in 2018, total assets of 6.173 billion, as of 1231-2017, the company owned interest in 162 apartment communities containing 55,143 apartment units. The Maker District was passed by Council in September 2019. This plan rezoned 70 acres of commercial and 488 acres of industrial land to a full 558 acres of mixed-use industrial development. The first project in this area, Broadway Roosevelt, was offered by the development attorney promising the housing would be workforce. 
In fact, the entire project is market rate and avoids stipulations that would guarantee stable workforce housing. It does provide a YouTube link that you can view later. Next is Tempe Market Station. The proposed Tempe Market Station continues this unfortunate trend. The developer Kimato Partners and attorney Rendy R. Riddell, law firm of Barry Riddell, are proposing a 310 unit luxury apartment complex. The proposed complex is dense for a five story building. 79% of the units are one bedroom or less, 53 units, 17% are studios, and 193, 62% are one bedroom. Proposed rents are studio, 1,450 to 1,500 a month, one bedroom, 1,650 to 1,700 a month, two bedroom, 2,250 to 2,350 per month, three bedroom, 3,750 to 3,850 per month. The reality is on the ground and he provides an income by zip code link. In Tempe zip code 85281, medium household income is 35,682. In Tempe zip code 85282, median household income is 53,475. Developers may hesitate to follow as they do in Phoenix, a 10% rule of holding units off the market rate designation. The Affordable Housing Trust Fund offers an alternative. Once established with reasonable collections, the fund would allow the city to purchase parcels, units, and projects under their control. The city could ensure that these developments would be dedicated to financially challenged and poorer residents. But this should be spelled out in a mathematical formula to avoid the paltry and subjective inputs to date. This proposed project offers an opportunity to begin and codify the process. A potential formula as applied to Tempe Market Station, the developer would not need to make a one-time contribution. The contribution could be spread over two to five years. In this way, they would then realize income from the project while they contribute. In addition, the contribution would be tax deductible. Tempe Market Station proposes to construct 310 luxury units. 30 units, approximately 10%, could be designated as workforce affordable. Phoenix uses a 10% rule for developer contributions. 31 bedroom studio units would rent for $1,500 each the current average for luxury apartments in Tempe. Those 30 units would gross $45,000 a month. The $45,000 a month times 12 months would gross $540,000 per year. My timer's going off, Mayor, so I've hit the five minute mark, but I do encourage you to go ahead and read the full letter and the attached 262 names that have been submitted. Last item. Um, Mr. Mayor, sorry. Mr. Mayor? Yes, uh, uh, Councilor Bikini. So, you know, if this were a typical council meeting and someone were reading it, you know, giving a statement, we'd be able to ask a question. So I wanted to ask if the names could be read, because it is an extraordinary number of names. I don't think it's in response to a development. Since, so this is uh, first time I've ever had that request be made, but whatever, uh, Madam Clerk, what, uh, what's the protocol? Hello? Can you hear me now? Sorry about that. I can hear you now. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I can read the names in support. Let me pull those up momentarily. It's just going to take me a little while to finish them all. So first, it, first is Catherine Mancini, Kathy Walters, Tom Walters, Deborah Zajac, Jenna Granillo, Michelle Brown, Gail Majors, Christine Kimball, Joan Westlake, Kevin Brown, Marie Provine, Karen Gitless, Phil Amorosi, Justin Stewart, Shannon Dutton, Gail Shanks, Jeannie Frieden, Victor Arano, Bob Summer, Noreen Hurd, Susan Waters Carlson, Bill Carlson, Patricia Valles, Gretchen Reinhardt, Sid Freedy, Barbara Como, Carolyn Martins, Bill Churchill, Selena Canty, Jerome Beerwagen, Miriam Ephraim, Fred Samuelson, Sarah Samuelson, Hugh McDowell, Larry Conway, Marsha Patton, Hillary Nelson, George Love, Paulette Pullman, Sue Ringler, Stephen Klug, Marion Durham, Jim Durham, Thai May, Stan Sorensen, Lisa Berkson, Steve Bokenkamp, Melissa Samuelson, Lori Wells, Alicia Thompson, Chris Deaton, Barbara McNally, Laura Dalbo, Gina Dalbo, Mary Weiss, Trevor Wood, Ken Bond, Aaron Thacker, Francine Bard, 
Doreen Kelly, Hoyt Tillman, Sue Lofgren, Harriet Smith, Andrew Smith, Julie Bufkin, Keegan Allen, Deborah Carpenter, Janet Horvath, Julie Varhol, Alice Fraunfelder, Diane Bottomley, Rebecca Green, Melanie Sprout, Nancy Fee, Richard Fee, Carol Bowling, Ron Webster, Alice Brimrose, Tamira Burns, Rosemary Castellanos, Sandy Ropperstruck, Bob Ropperstruck, Larry Barkin, Robin Nelson, Ben Duguay, Jan Dowdy, Debbie Roberts, Suzanne Ecker, William Banks, Janet Norman, Barbara Crisp, Dennis Etterer, Juliet Gomez, Linda Croft, Brian Perkins, Ellen Carpenter, Scott Siebel, Monica Wadsworth Siebel, Kristen Countryman, Jim Delton, Bill Letow, Tim Tact Meyer, Richard Newhauser, Jonathan Kelman, Peter Crank, Dr. Don Penish Thacker, Linda Martin, Timothy Cook, Marcia Spencer, Ronnie Alexander, Chip Eccles, Zoe Stein, Gary Brennan, Kevin Wright, Sue Lofgren, Ruth Kearns, Charles Redman, Linda Redman, Danny Green, William Green, Marianne Rosneck, George Rosneck III, Beth Lang, Jennifer McVaugh, Kent McVaugh, Shireen Lerner, Dr. Raquel Gutierrez, Lucas Cabrera, Ron Pies, Kim Bauman Peterson, Lisa Martin, Ronnie Sue Lee, John Johnson, Shoshana Starzinski, Veronica Gonzalez, John Linda, Linda Schilling, Christina Chilvers, Ross Cater, Lisa Brock, Susan Soroka, Tobias A. Feltis, Ted Raper, Carolyn Raper, Jean Ratliff, Sally Clements, Ronald McNamee, Linda Fisher, Philip Burnick, Rhonda Still, Arthur Glenberg, Kathleen Clark, Deidre Simmons, Chet Myers, Elizabeth Hill, Gregory Brown, Laura McGuire, Kimberly Schmidt, Mark Nimshoff, Ann Fan, Barbara Grady, Maria Harris, Ann Hart, Susan O'Donnell, Jennifer Waters, Donna Hall, Darlene Paney, Rebecca Bond, Tom Brown, Diane Hughes, Angela Edwards, Lisa Bain, Gary Crandall, Brian Gratton, Mark Hackney, J.C. Nackney, Diane Shook, Lucy and Naya Mitchell, Sharon Crook, Alejandra Gutierrez, Ryan Guzzi, Lisa Hobson, Bradford Chapman, Linda Amorosi, Ellen Welty, Eric Cousineau, Linda Cabrera, Matt Trink, Noreen Herring, Vince Bimani, Majid Akavan, Terry Ekvin, Adriana Puente Martinez, Ron Tapscott, Judy Tapscott, Grace Wagner, David Gragner, Philip Brown, Ellie Velosin, Daryl R. Stern, Betsy Rosenmiller, Escalante Neighborhood Association, Deborah Moninger, Dave Palmer, Kendon Young, Kim Gaffney Loza, Linda Artak, Marsha Iole, Jay Iole, Lucy Logan, Virginia Stahl, Kimberly King, Sandy Hopped, Paul Hubble, Jeff Clark, Bonnie Willard, Annie Foe, Victor Grijalva, Galen Valdez, Gloria Askentowitz, M.G. Harris, Christopher Lovermy, Sahar Bick, Natalie Bustamante, Nancy Vigram, Stephanie Clark, Jessica Binkley, Edward Clark, Marcia Clark, Jerry Kersiges, Ford Doran, Nancy Jameson, Lynette Guck, Sandra Aragon, Candace Toller, Rabbi Dean Shapiro, Hannah Moulton Beck, Ara Bellick, Eric Bellick, Jamie Peckins, Richard Hervig, Mark Schlossman, Dennis Lemon, Susan Conklu, Robert Deacon, Kim Kleiber, Joseph Gibbs, Donald Johnson, Ann Perkins, Aaron Moser, Alice Valenzuela, Dave Nebelsberger, Tony Ramsey, Mark Mulligan, Jean Ruth, Deborah Sanders, Betty Ann Garcia Pendley, Randall Pendley, Mamie Ambar, Todd Springer, Chris Rogers, Stan Sapinski, and April Sapinski. If I mispronounce anyone's name, I apologize profusely. I have one more card. Okay. This one comes from Akhtar Rahman. And he writes, I am in support of the Tempe Market Station development. My property neighbors, the proposed de development. My property address is 1817 East Rio Salado Parkway. This development would greatly improve the area and would give housing for employees and students of the adjoining industrial area. And Mayor, that closes out our public comment. 
Mr. Mayor, our speaker, uh, Mark Davis, has returned into the okay. audience. Okay. Mr. Davis, whenever you're ready. Yeah, Mayor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I um, I have a, a property, 1803 East Rio Salado, and, and the comment card you just heard is from uh, my neighboring property owner, uh, my neighboring property. Um, I'm in support of this zoning case. Uh, the Smith Industrial Hub is an area that is in transformation. Um, my neighbor, uh, Aki, who you just heard from, uh, myself, we've invested um, substantial amounts of money into this area. And we want to see the future and the area to be transformed. We under I understand that Tempe has a craving and a need and an aspire aspiration for affordable housing. And that's critical and key. But this area, the Smith Innovation Hub, is in a transformative state where this site really is going to invigorate more strong, good development that perhaps will include affordable housing elements and workforce housing elements in the future. My tenant, one of my tenants is a comic store. And I just think about all of the uh, residents that may benefit from, and my, my, my tenant that might benefit from, uh, you know, 300 new units in, in this corridor. Tempe Marketplace, when that was designed, it was, it was designed, you know, to feed off the parking lots on the interior rather than from, from the exterior along Rio Salado. This is a transformative project that is going to let Rio Salado become the connective tissue in the corridor to, the, to this area. This is really good for Smith Innovation Hub. I'm excited to see this. Uh, my adaptive reuse project completed, uh, it's called Circa 78, and um, it completed in February, just in time for uh, coronavirus. And I'm really excited because I know that this will help even with my project to maybe get a restaurant in there that can connect with all the new tenants and in the area. So this is a, this is a very positive element for the area. I, I've toured the developer's other project in Midtown Phoenix. I was extremely impressed. Um, and I, I really hope the council does not lose sight on, on the affordable housing and workforce housing needs in the community. I just don't, I don't really sincerely feel like this is not the project to, to kind of die up, to, to kind of fall a sword on for that. Um, maybe the other ones that are listed, I don't know them, but, but this is a transformative area that is going to really benefit tremendously from this one project. Mr. Mayor, thank you for your time. Great. Thank you, Mr. Davis. All right. Uh, any other comments, comment cards, speakers? None, Mayor. All right. Great. All right. Hold on one second here. All right, well, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing. I'm gonna to turn to the council. Any comments or discussion? Mr. Mayor, I have my hand raised. Oh, yes, Councilor Cubie. Yeah, so um, the proposed development agreement is a development agreement. It, it came to us 45 minutes before the start of our meeting tonight. I just happened to see it because I was busy preparing. Um, and so I know there's been a lot of negotiations going on behind the scenes. And so but I feel like there's been really little time for us to digest what is being proposed and also to hear reactions from the community. Because as we heard from Carla tonight, sorry, Carla, but um, I just thought it was important to hear those names. I think it's important in the interest of transparency that we, uh, that we get more reactions from the community. This has been a very quick process. It was just presented to us two weeks ago. So I want to call for a continuance to wait until November 12th to, to delay the second reading, essentially, to delay the vote. So I want to make a motion to call for a continuance till November 12th. Thank you, Councilor Bercubi. Okay, so Councilor Bercubi has called for a motion for a continuance. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, seconded by Council Member Adams. Are any further comment, any comments regarding the motion? Okay. 
And I, I guess, Mr. Mayor, um, I could say in support of the motion, uh, you know, typically development agreements get discussed also in e session. So there should be an e session set up, or we could have one tonight. Um, but I'm, you know, concerned about there's really good things about the proposed um, development agreement. I'm, I'm concerned about just moving our funds, essentially from the general fund into the housing trust fund. I mean, I think it's a good rule to do all around, but um, for this particular agreement, I don't, it, and I can go into all the reasons about the development later, um, if that's appropriate, but I think we have to have some time to digest this. Development agreements typically come with a few more, few more requests out of the developer, for example, related to recycling, related to um, uh, apprentice workers. We have the Boyer language that we use as a model that goes along with development agreements. So that's why I feel like 45 minutes before is not enough time to digest. And I don't think that's good public policy, I, you know, to just decide on this tonight with very little advance warning and very little public input. A lot of people because of COVID aren't watching, aren't at the meeting or able to participate. So I think it's important we continue. Mr. Mayor, if I can add a, a few comments. Yes, Councilman Rattles. I really feel like, you know, we need to reevaluate how we're doing it, all these processes because, you know, it's not really fair at the end to move the goalposts for the developers. And it's not fair to not have significant input from the neighborhoods and the community that this will affect. So that's why I'm supportive with the continuance and trying to talk out some more issues and see if we can come to a win-win for both the developer and the neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. Any other comments or questions regarding the continuance motion? All right. Sorry, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and call for a vote on the motion. Mayor, uh, I'm sorry, this is, this is Robin. Yes. I'm sorry about that. I, I was trying to find my hand raising, but I just can't seem to locate that. I, I was wondering, could we possibly hear um, from Mrs. Rydell in regards to what impact a continuance may have on the project moving forward? Would that be possible? We, we, can, we can do that. I would only say the only thing is based on the fact that there's already a motion on the table, it would need to be withdrawn uh, by Councilmember Kuby to, uh, to, give, uh, to give Ms. Riddell a chance to answer that question. Councilmember Kuby, would you mind withdrawing just so uh, Arredondo Savage can have that question answered? Of course, that's fine with me. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Wendy, I'll go ahead and turn to you then to uh, answer the question that Councilmember Arredondo Savage asked. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councilwoman um, Savage. Yes, we would not be in support of a continuance. We have been working for a very long time on this project, you know, more than five iterations with staff, uh, working with the immediate surrounding abutting property owners who are in support of this project. I'd also like to clarify that we are not suggesting a development agreement here. Uh, there was early discussions, and perhaps that's what Councilmember Kuby um, is referring to or saw. What we are suggesting here is very different, which is we are standing up and voluntarily agreeing to give $125,000, four times more than any previous contribution to the trust fund, to the trust fund. We will execute an agreement with the city manager, but it is not a development agreement. This is a voluntary contribution on behalf of Trammell Crow. Uh, I guess I would also point out that this um, willingness to do this in large part is to give us the opportunity to move forward with the project now to get into construction drawings. It's with anticipation of being able to do that. So I very much appreciate the opportunity to speak. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Wendy. Councilmember Ardano Savage, any follow up questions? No, I, I just, I, I thought it was just respectful to um, check in with check in with the developer and, and see what their perspective is just to get the whole picture. So thank you, Mayor. Great. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, any other comments or questions for uh, Wendy while she's back on the mic? I'd like to say something, but I don't need to interact and, and ask her a question. Um, okay, uh, Council Member Cuby, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure, you know, the two weeks that we're talking about, it really hasn't been explained that it would be such a hardship. And 
it, you may have been working on this project since March, but it's the first time that we've seen it. I mean, two weeks ago was the first time that we'd seen it. October, what was that? October um, 15th. And, uh, I, you know, we're in this pressure to hurry up and make a decision right now. And I was told by city staff that uh, this would be a development agreement. So there's a lot of, that sort of proves my point. There's a lot of you know, rumors, gossip, or whatever going around, and we don't really know. Uh, it, this really hasn't been discussed as a body um, in, within e-session, perhaps. Um, it, I feel really insecure moving ahead when we haven't had a thorough vetting of this. I would ask, actually, then, Councilor QB to that point, um, so I, I appreciate you raising that. Uh, I can't make the motion because I'm the chair of the meeting, but I wondered if anyone actually wants to talk about it in executive session, because we do have that, we do have that opportunity as council members right now to have that discussion. If yeah. no one does, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Well, council can we just, can we vote on the motion and then we can talk about the e-session after? Well, the only thing I would I would say about that though is that is that I mean we can we can go Council Member QB we can go to your motion first um, whatever but I think we can also but it seems to me just and just from what I'm thinking it would make more sense to talk about doing the executive session now to talk about the details of the deal than it would to vote on the continuance first if that's just my perspective so but uh, I'm I'll, I'll defer. I'm happy to follow your, your lead, Mr. Mayor, um, but I would just point out that one of my reasons for asking for the continuance is the extraordinary amount of, of uh, public engagement on this and going to e-session, while it's be helpful for all of us to better understand the proposed agreement, it doesn't really help with the transparency um, aspect of my motion. But I understand what you're saying, and I, I would then want to go ask for, to um, go to Executive session. Okay. Is is is, is that a motion, Council Member QB, or? Yes. Okay, so the motion's made by Council Member QB to adjourn to executive session. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Navarro. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take a roll call vote. Uh, Council Member Navarro? Aye. Council Member QB? Aye. Council Member Garland? Aye. K Vice Mayor Keating? No. Councilmember Arredondo Savage? Aye. Councilmember Adams? Councilmember Adams? Aye. Aye. Can you hear me? Okay. Then yes. I, and, and I will vote aye as well. So that's uh, six to one to go into executive session. We're going to go ahead and adjourn and we will return. Thank you, Alex. All right, we're going to re-adjourn the meeting here at 8.23 p.m. Uh, we are still just to remind the public on item 62, which is to hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance for a zoning map amendment from PCC2 to MU4 and an amended planned area development overlay and approve a development plan review for a five-story, 310-unit multifamily development for Tempe Market Station, located at 1953 East Rio Salado Parkway. The applicant is Barry Riddell, LLC. The first public hearing was held on October 15, 2020. We've already had the presentation. I just wanted to see uh, if Ms. Riddell is still there. Mr. Mayor, we are. Great, thank you. Um, Council, um, any other, any questions for Ms. Riddell? And we appreciate you waiting for, uh, for us to finish up. Of course. Yes, Mayor, I have a question. Yes, Vice Mayor Keating. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, my question is for Ms. Riddell. It, it, you know, let's um, stipulate that this was continued. Um, what would be the consequence on the $125,000 contribution if this was pushed back two weeks? Thank you, Mayor and Councilmember Keating. Um, we gave that contribution voluntarily so we could get this matter approved tonight. So uh, I am somewhat disadvantaged, of course, because Trammell Crow isn't sitting with me here in the room, but my instructions from them headed into this hearing were very clear that that is what we were um, hoping to accomplish with this, again, voluntary contribution. 
Uh, I would also add that we're very comfortable stipulating that really an agreement, a separate agreement is not necessary. We're very comfortable agreeing to give the $125,000 voluntarily as a contribution, as a stipulation. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other members of council have any comments or questions? Mr. Mayor, I do. I'm not, yes, sure if I'm, following, I'm not sure if we should be following the raise hand protocol or not. I'm always like unsure, but anyway. Um, yeah, I had a question about uh, in lieu of design changes. I know that the DRC has stipulated design changes and it was to make the facade less, look, look, to offset the stick and stucco construction, have it a different kind of facade. And is there an estimate of the cost of those design changes, which we would lose from this agreement? Uh, thank you, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilwoman Kuby. So the stipulation was actually much more specific to that. It was actually just addressing the corner at Smith and um, Rio Salado. And when we estimated those fees, that's actually where we were estimating between twenty-five and $35,000. So what Trammell Crow is willing to offer and has voluntarily offered tonight is obviously significantly more than that. Uh, yes, I understand. And, and uh, for the question that Vice Mayor Keating asked, I understand you're saying almost like saying this is an offer for tonight. But, you know, in reality, as I, I think about it as a council member, uh, there are entitlements that, are being, that would be voted on tonight. And those entitlements give you um, increased value to your land as the as the uh, zoning amendment did last last um, two weeks ago. So I, I'm, I'm back to where I was before. I, I feel that we need to have uh, staff, especially our legal staff, to look at this agreement more carefully because it has come up pretty suddenly just today. And so for that reason, I would like to make a motion that we continue this, the um, second hearing um, of this project to such time where staff feels comfortable that it's ready for a second hearing. Mayor, I have a question still. Yes, Kessler, uh, DeVar, I just need to get a second on the motion first before going forward with comment. Is there a second? If there is one. This is Jennifer. I'll second the, the motion. Okay. Uh, that goes, and that, that's based on the fact that what our legal team, uh, I guess if the legal team wants to comment, uh, but it sounds like they just got the information, so I'm concerned about uh, uh, not having a thorough process. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. Uh, Councilmember Navarro. Yeah, just uh, and for clarity with with Wendy on the stipulation, there is no with that stipulation. There's no uh, contractual agreement from the city to uh, to to address anything to add to that stipulation are you are you saying that's just a goodwill uh gesture yes mayor uh councilman navarro it is purely a goodwill gesture and by the way trammel crow has made it clear to me that the agreement is on the table for tonight to get the project approved tonight and uh if we just give the if we turn this simply into a stipulation we're very willing to do that and it would only relate to Trammell Crow's voluntary contribution of $125,000 to be used at the council's discretion for affordable and workforce housing and for the art. Okay, Councilmember Navarro, any other questions? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, anyone else have any comments or questions? Uh, Mayor, this is Robin, I got a, I got a couple comments. Yes, sir, Councilor Rowe down seven. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I I guess I'm not, I'm not really sure how this vote's gonna go. I know we have a, a motion on the table in a second to postpone this and, and I certainly don't think that's a bad idea. I feel like when we get information kind of at the 11th hour, it's really hard for us to digest and, and make good informed decisions. Um, I will say, I think I was, a little bit thrown aback um, in regards to utilizing our um, development fees as any type of, um, I guess I would say, commitment to balance our our housing stock. Because technically, I think you know, it was who said that Deb, Deb Zajac that basically said that comes out of our general fund, and that is general fund money. So 
for that to be part of any voluntary document, I certainly don't agree with that. I, I think that's something that's very concerning and should be more of a policy discussion and something that the, the city council should be able to decide and maybe get some way in from our residents in regards to what a priority of affordable housing is in the future. So I certainly don't agree with that. If that's something that we are going to continue to talk about and move forward, we're also making uh, more limited design changes. I think I said it two weeks ago and I'm going to say it again today. This is a really unique area. We talked about the Smith Innovation Hub starting back in 2018. So it's not like this wasn't a known factor, something that got everybody excited, got our resident excited, people within that area excited. I think economic development did a really good job of making sure that the state on the forefront got feedback. We were able to just approve it recently, and I understand that, and we just approved it recently. But at the same time, I feel like it's our responsibility to ensure that the projects that come forward have the design and the character that really fit the area. And as much as I um, am happy with this design, it's nice, it looks great, but I could find that anywhere in the city of Tempe. Uh, it doesn't scream or shout to me that this is something unique and different and, and innovative. And however it happened to get to this point, I mean, I think I have to take some responsibility, the city does, the developer does, I think to um, not take into consideration the Smith Innovation Hub and what our vision is, is, you know, a mistake. And um, I'm really disappointed to, to see that. So um, I, I understand, I feel like there's some, some work that could be done and um, I feel really strongly about certain things and the design is definitely one of them and making sure that we uh, are doing what we can to fulfill our vision just makes me feel like that's something that, you know, I need to draw a line on and um, be firm about what it is we're trying to accomplish as a council, as a community, and um, within the Smith Innovation Hub. So um, I do appreciate everybody's work and hopefully that we can come together and uh, create something that we can all buy into. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Member Arredondo Savage. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Mayor, can I explain my vote on the continuance motion at that time or do I have to make a comment prior? Um, you can explain now and then we'll take the vote. Um, yeah, so I will be voting no on the continuance, and here's the reason why is, you know, at the very least, we're walking away from a stipulation that would increase our affordable housing trust fund uh, by three, almost three times. And as much as we talk about affordable housing, and, you know, for years, we've barely had a trust fund whatsoever, um, you know, that's, that in of itself is a significant improvement on what we currently have. Um, and at the very worst, we are um, walking away from what would be a 6.5-fold increase on the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. So, um, as, as, as is said in these meetings often, um, there, there's talking to talk and there's walking to walk. Um, and I, I will be disappointed if we turn down was essentially free money in the $125,000 and not so free money, but it's money that we're not going to get if this project fails, right? We're getting zero if this project fails. If it goes forward, we're getting 500K, 200K of which would go to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, look, there's the good, and there's the perfect, and there's nothing. And I'm very much, I'll take the good over the perfect every day, especially with how much lip service is paid to affordable housing in the city. So I'll be able to know on the continuance. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor Keating. Uh, Council Member Navarro. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, listen, I, I, this, this got hard. Um, I'm still for this project. I think the project's a good project. And I understand what uh, the constituents are saying. I understand what the other council members are saying. I know that um, we have questions on some deal points uh, on, on our end and, and obviously you know, kind of goes in lines of policy decisions that that we should have had some guidance on. But at the same time, I, I want to say this, even with guidance, even with our policy, every deal is unique. Every deal is going to have a twist or turn to it to some degree. Um, obviously, we want to make sure our developers are aware of the council's wishes. Um, so they're not going into the 11th hour blindly. Um, and I understand, too, that questions do arise from constituents, as they do 
often when we get down to the 11th hour too. So it does come down to the council to make a decision on these things. Um, there's, there's just those things that I know that the council member has pause on and, and legal gave us some pause on some, some items. But um, even if this goes to a continuance, I just want to say this project is still a good project in my mind. If we can work out some, some minor details um, to that, but knowing that there's no guarantees with what is being offered on the table today, um, if that's going to be offered on the table tomorrow, and if the deal points change to something even different. Uh, I think Council Member uh, Vice Mayor Keating said, you know, it very well. I mean, these are these are these are the things that we are often up against, and we have to make decisions on where we're going to go with that those types of money and how we're going to address those money. In my opinion, I've stated this m multiple times over and over. We're truly not going to have any good control over affordability unless the city is absolutely involved in it. Either a tremendous discount on land, we own the land. However, it is. In perpetuity, which I know that's what we're trying to get to, because even if a project comes in with, yeah, we're going to go affordability, we're going to make you guys happy, in two to three years, that project is now probably a market rate project, depending on the circumstances. So we don't get guarantees with, with just, you know, begging and pleading, and we want this, and we want that, and I know that our constituents want that too. It is a tough deal when we're talking on private property, and we're talking about property that's not asking for the city for anything. So that, that's what makes it very hard in this situation. I, I do hear the concerns um, that we addressed and um, just, just a tough decision right now. Great, thank you, Council Member Navarro. Council thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, if I were representing a developer, I'd want to say this is the offer tonight and I'm not sure the offer will be available to you in a few weeks. I mean, that's what you should do, Wendy. That's your interest. I understand that. But as a council member, I, we, have to, we have to think, as council members, we have to think of the larger interest. We have to think about the Smith Industrial Innovation Hub and its design guidelines, which I know aren't requirements, but we need to look at that seriously. And to get, you know, the former mayor, Hallman, sent an agreement Today, I thought it was supposed to be a development agreement, but it's not, it's a voluntary agreement. And there's discussion about uh, that we need to have staff sort of weighing in on this more and not just doing something at the very last minute. I don't understand the haste and the rush. Again, if I were representing the developer, I'd want there to be haste and a rush, but you know, we need, to, we need to take a step back and I want our attorneys to be able to look at this carefully. And um, I so support affordable housing. I think, you know, in contrast to what, Vice Mayor Keating was saying, yes, this is a, the last contributions made to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund were $30,000 from the level development that replaced mobile home community with $388,000 townhomes. And that's the poorest census tract in, in, the, um, in the city. And those, that $30,000 would be about one deposit for a house, one deposit. So, you know, that was really minuscule. And then Banyan, two, Banyan 1 came in and made the same offer and we accepted it somehow. And that was also in a census tract that was uh, not, not as uh, wealthy as other census tracts, right? So we don't, if we're gonna establish policy here, that concerns me. I, I really think, again, that we need to have a continuance. And, and if, I, I don't believe that we're gonna lose that opportunity because we are, by giving away these large entitlements that will go forever with the land, we're giving something major to this developer. So we do have leverage here and I want us to consider that and get the best possible project for our residents. So I continue with the motion as expressed. Excuse me, Mayor. This yes, is Judy. Uh, yes, Judy. Thank you. I was going to ask if we could clarify the motion for postponement to a date certain. The next regular council meeting would be held on November 12th. So, Judy, do we have to say date certain? I just did want to box in staff if things, you know, were ready the day after, you know, or, so I wanted to, does it have to be a date certain? Did? It's useful for posting notices that are required for the hearing mm -hmm. process. So, I mean, I'm fine with writing November 12th. The Mayor, since I was a second on the motion, I'm fine with November 12th to also. Okay. 
So, uh, Catherine McKibbe, do you want to read your amended motion then? Yes, um, I make a motion that we delay the second reading of the proposed market station project until November 12th. And I second that motion, this council member Adams. And I guess you should add the, the next uh, regular council meeting on November 12th. Okay. Uh, I want I want to I want to make some comments as well here, just to make sure that I get these on the record too. Um, I, I one of my concerns here with this is, I also agree, you know, with something that that uh, that that Councilmember Navarro said that I do believe that we at some point have to. I think we have to at some point make sure that we, if people are voluntarily offering contributions. Uh, to help, you know, get our affordable housing trust fund or the or the housing affiliate, uh, you know, some actual resources in it, so we can actually go out and determine our own destiny and purchase property. Uh, I think that's something that you know we should be doing. Quite honestly, when I, you know, when I got on um, when I became mayor in July, you know, looking at the two housing funds that we actually have, we've got a housing trust fund that has zero dollars in it. We have an affiliate, whatever, the Tempe Coalition for Affordable Housing, that basically has a net of $50,000. I mean, so both funds combined have $50,000. And that, that's not enough money, frankly, to do anything. And so I think when we're talking about, you know, getting, you know, $125,000 of additional money as a voluntary contribution, I don't think that's any kind of a small number. And I also believe, in a sense, with the $200,000 of development fees, I think my perspective is if the deal goes away you lose all of it we're not talking about 125,000 we're not talking about 325,000 we're talking about nothing and 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 that i don't feel helps us in any way shape or form to fulfill our commitment when it comes to affordable housing um and so that's one of my big concerns um as someone who frankly kind of came in on this you know i would say someone at the 11th hour based on when i started as mayor, but I think that's my real, that's my really big concern when it comes to this, to be quite candid. So those are my comments. So do we vote now? Yes, I'm gonna, yes, uh, if there's no other comments, I'm gonna go ahead and call the question. So the motion is um, to continue uh, item 62 until the next regular scheduled council meeting, which is let me make sure, I think Thursday, November 12th, I believe the date is? Yes. Okay. Uh, seeing that, I'm gonna go ahead and call a roll call vote here. Uh, Council Member Navarro? Nay. Council Member Cuby? Aye. Council Member Garland? Aye. Vice Mayor Keating? No. Council Member Arredondo Savage? Hi, sorry, Mayor. No problem. Councilmember Adams? I Okay. And I vote no. So the motion to uh, the motion to continue passes four to three. And so this item will be moved to the November twelfth regular council meeting. All right. Next up, we have item 63, which is to hold the second and final public hearing. Let me turn my camera on. I forgot that it was off. Hold the second and final public hearing to adopt an ordinance amending the city code relating to preserves by amending section 23-110 relating to rules for use, criminal penalty, by adding section 23-111 relating to rules of use, civil penalty, by amending section 23-113 relating to authority to establish additional rules and regulations by adding chapter 23, article five, division three, relating to administration and enforcement by adding section 23-131, commencement of civil action, citation contents by adding section 23-132, relating to civil fines and penalties imposed by adding section 23-133, relating to each day separate violations and by adding section 23 uh, dash 134 relating to habitual offender. The first public hearing was held on October 15th, 2020. Does staff need to make a statement on this item?
Okay, uh, were any comments received from members of the public regarding this? None for this item, Mayor. Okay, it said uh, none, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing. Council, are there any comments or questions in item 63? All right, hearing none, I'll, I'll look for a motion. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Moved Second. by Councilmember Adams, seconded by Vice Mayor Keating. I'm going to go ahead and take a roll call vote here. Councilmember DeVaro? Aye. Councilmember Cuby? Aye. Councilmember Garland? Aye. Vice Mayor Keating? Yes. Councilmember Arredondo Savage? Aye. Councilmember Adams? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Item 63 passes 7 to 0. Next item is item 64, which is to introduce and hold the first and final public hearing to receive public comment on and approve a resolution, a resolution authorizing an amendment for the fiscal year 2019-2020 annual action plan. The purpose of the amendment is to include the one-time $1,085,269 in funding received for the Community Development Block Grant Coronavirus Program. The one-time $1,790,686 in funding received for the Emergency Solutions Grant Coronavirus Round 2 and the one-time $1,902,488 in funding received for the Community Development Block Grant Coronavirus Round 3 as a result of the CARES Act. Additionally, the amendment will reallocate $442,000 of 2019 home funds and 2020 home program income to tenant-based rental assistance to increase funding to meet the urgent need for, rental ass for housing assistance. Is staff available to make any statement on this? All right, uh, any comments from the public on this item? No input received for this item, Mayor. Okay, but go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, Council, any comments or questions on item 64? Move to approve. I'll second. Okay, moved by Vice Mayor Keating, seconded by Council Member Adams. <laughs> Go for a roll call vote. Council Member DeMar. Uh, Council Member Cuby. Aye. Council Member Garland. Aye. Vice Mayor Keating. Yes. Council Member Arredondo Savage. Aye. Councilmember Adams. Aye. And I vote aye as well. The item passes 60, uh, uh, seven to nothing, excuse me. All right, next up is item number seven here, which is current events, council announcements, and future agenda items. I'm just gonna call on every council member. Uh, council member Navarro. Uh, none, Mayor, thank you for that, but just wishing everybody a happy Halloween as it's coming up. And I know that we have coronavirus, so please be safe, wear your masks. Thank you, Councilmember. Uh, Councilmember Cuby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think we have some graphics to come up. Yes, I just want to give a shout out to our Hope Outreach team and um, Nikki Stevens for our Homeless Solutions Supervisor because they were doing such amazing work uh, and recently succeeded in housing quite a number of people and we got it. Uh, we got it. An email from and from sorry I'm sorry from Stephen Methvin about their success. You know sometimes it's the first touch, sometimes it's the thirtieth touch, sometimes it happens after a month, sometimes it takes twenty years. But we succeeded in getting housing and stability for uh, a, quite a number of homeless folks in the past few months. So I really want to thank the Hope Outreach team for all that they do. And second, many of you may this is late breaking news, so I wanted you to know, um, but Dr. Shireen Lerner has been appointed to the Arizona Independent Redistricting Commission as of this afternoon. She is the appointment made by Charlene Fernandez of the House. And I wanna congratulate her. You know, Shireen is well known to the city of Tempe. She was on our Tempe Census Committee and she still serves on that. She was on the Parks and Recreation Committee and is the vice chair currently. And she's also the chair of the Tempe Desert Conservation Commission. She is somebody who's long given to uh, Tempe and to Tempe leadership. I'm so proud that someone from Tempe, uh, you know, somebody who is really has an academic grounding and a, and a thorough understanding of equity issues is going to be representing all of Arizona on the commission. It's, it's, quite, it's quite an honor for Shireen and quite an honor for Tempe. So congratulations, Shireen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Cuby. Next up, Councilor Carlin. Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Uh, Vice Mayor Keating. I didn't have any, but I didn't know that Dr. Lerner was appointed to the uh, IRC. I just would like to congratulate her as well. She also serves on our Public Safety Task Force and is on our um, uh, Citizens Review Commission. So she's very involved in the city of Tempe, and I thank her for her service not only to our city, but our state. Thank you, Vice Mayor Keating. Councilmember Arredondo Savage. Uh, nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Adams. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd also like to congratulate uh, um, Dr. Lerner on her uh, um, acceptance of that very valuable um, uh, role to play in redistricting, redistricting and everything. So thank you very much. Um, I would like to also give a shout out to Joe Forte. Last week, I had the opportunity to meet Joe at Palmer Park, where he walks his dog two times a day, and he also picks up trash two times a day. And that park looks so good as a result. I am so proud to get to know all of the residents getting involved in our community. Joe is planning on starting an initiative called Keep Tempe Beautiful. It's a nonprofit organization, and he's looking for residents and volunteers to get involved with his program and will be holding a meeting on November 17th at 5.30 to 7 p.m. at Kiwanis Park. So please reach out uh, to Joe if you're interested in it and you can go to facebook.com slash keep Tempe beautiful. And my second announcement is please vote. If you still have a ballot, you must drop it off. It's too late to mail it. So you can go to Tempe Historical Museum and it's the place to drop it off. And the address is 809 East Southern Avenue. That's right next to the library. Easy to find. All ballots must be received by 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening. You can check on your voting status by going to beballotready.vote. So check that out and you can uh, keep track of your ballot, which I did, and it was really exciting to see it go in and then have my signature verified. So thanks and uh, have a good night. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. And just my one quick comment is I wanted to congratulate Dr. Lerner as well uh, for being appointed to the Independent Redistricting Commission. It's a great honor. Uh, she's an exceptional Tempe resident and I'm very excited for her. So congratulations to Dr. Shereen Lerner. Next up, item eight is public appearances. Madam Clerk, uh, any comments for public appearances? Carla, if you're trying to say something, your mic is uh, muted. Alex, do you know if we have any uh, comments for tonight from on item eight? No comments, sir. Okay. All right, Carl, I'll do one last check. Uh, any, anyone scheduled for item A? All right, well, if hearing none, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 8.53 p.m. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you on November 12th. Goodbye, Mr. Mayor. Goodbye.